Okay, so this is part three. You guys these lymphatic origins. Um, so the all those blood cells, remember, are coming from the red marrow anyway. And but they're undifferentiated when they're first created. Now the B cells are probably differentiated in the red marrow, and then they go to into the bloodstream and end up in the lymphatic system, so end up in like a lymph node where they can do their job. The T cells go to the thymus gland to become differentiated, and then they go through the blood and end up in the lymphatic system. So helper T cells, so there's three kinds of T cells we'll talk about, and just in general. The helper T cells are there to uh, recognize the foreign antigens on the macrophages. The macrophages' jobs are really to just eat the bacteria, let's say, let's just use bacteria as an example, eat the bacteria, and then they display the bacteria on their um, receptors so that they can warn everyone else about the bacteria that's around. And so those can stimulate B cells and T cells to reproduce. The cytotoxic T cells attack any self cell that has um, a virus or is cancerous. And they use perforin. Now these cytotoxic T cells sound a lot like the natural killer cells. Okay, and it's they are similar, but it's it's how they detect the virally infected cell or the cancer cell. One of them detects them by the presence of a certain receptor, and the other one by the absence of a certain receptor. So um, the well, just to be so the CD8 cytotoxic T cells meet an antigen presenting cell, and the piece that touches the antigen turns into a cytotoxic T cell, and the other piece turns into a memory T cell. Memory T cells are just there, they're differentiated um, so that when you encounter the same antigen in the future, you can start your immune response that much faster. B cells, um, B cells are antigen specific, so they're looking for a very specific antigen. B cells bind the antigens and make copies of themselves. Now they need the helper T cell help. And they works better if they have the helper T cell help. And they differentiate into either a plasma B cell, which makes the antibodies, or a memory B cell, which does the same thing in responding to a future infection. Okay. So this makes more sense when we can put it all together. So we've got these B cells, and there's different B cells. The antibodies are just um, membrane bound on these B cells. Now when the correct antigen comes along, now these are little red circle antigens, so they didn't fit that one, and they didn't fit that one, and they didn't fit that one, but they were a perfect fit here, like a Goldilocks antigen. And when they bind to that B cell, it activates it, and this B cell will make a bunch of copies of itself and secrete the antibody into the plasma and the antibody can then go and do its job. Alright, so let's see what this whole thing when we put it together looks like. There we go. So this is what it looks like. You get a macrophage over here and the macrophage finds a bacterium. A bacteria. It finds some bacteria. And it takes it in through phagocytosis. So it takes it in, reaches those pseudopods around. Um, this puts it its own little uh, vesicle. And then that will then, um, it's called a phagosome. It's inside the phagocyte. And so now it's secluded. Now the bacteria can't get into the cells to do any damage. The macrophage will then allow 
lysosomes to fuse with the phagosome and you get the phagolysosome. Remember the lysosome has those digestive enzymes. They're gonna tear up that bacterium um, into small pieces and then it will take the small pieces, it'll send some of them out of the cell, out of the macrophage, but other ones it displays on its major histocompatibility complex too. So these antigens from the bacterium will be displayed on the macrophage, kind of like, you know, one of the, think of one of the soldiers, knights, whatever, walking around with the head of their enemy on a pike being like, hey, look out for this thing. It's really bad. You should try to kill it. Okay, so just a review. Macrophage takes in the bacteria, chews it up into little pieces using enzymes, spits some of the pieces out, but then displays some of them on its surface on the major histocompatibility complex 2 receptors. There we go. Okay, antibodies. Um, antibodies uh, have a constant region. This is what's embedded within the B cell or will be free floating. And then um, it'll have these antigen binding sites. The binding sites are specific. That's why they have this variable region. So this variable region is specific for different antigens. There's all these millions of different antigens, so we need millions of different variable regions. So maybe a bacteria, like a salmonella bacterium, will have a different variable region than the E. coli. And if you get a salmonella infection, um, these antibodies would bind to that, but they wouldn't bind to the E. coli. As an example, So T cell and B cell activation, um, here we are, this is back with our macrophage. So this macrophage took in this bacterium, chewed it up, and then displayed the, the antigens from the bacteria that it chewed up onto its surface. The helper T cell comes along and recognizes this antigen as something bad on this macrophage, and it becomes activated. When it becomes activated, this helper T cell is going to release cytokines, and the cytokines will release the, or will activate the B cell that is specific for that bacteria. So these chemicals, like a chemical messenger, gets released and it activates these B cells, and now these B cells are active, and they can, can combine with the antigen, or with the bacterium, Okay, to produce the antibodies. Now, B cells can also just become active when it comes into contact with the antigen. So the B cell finds the B cell with the correct um, receptors, antibodies, finds a bacterium, can become active, and then um, it just produces a bunch of copies of itself. And those copies um, are plasma B cells and memory B cells. And the plasma B cells are going to release the antibodies that are specific to fight this bacterium. The memory B cells will just be there to, for future infections. Now, if this memory B cell, if the infection is so many bacteria in here that this memory B cell becomes active, then it'll go through the whole process again. So how do the antibodies help us? Well, they can cause agglutination, so they can cause the bacteria um, to stick together. Okay, they can cause, um, and when the bacteria or the whatever pathogen is stuck together, they can't then, if it was a virus, for example, the virus can't infect our cells, and the bacteria can't attach um, to our cells and can't attach to our tissues. So that's the agglutination part. When they're all stuck together, they can't attach to our stuff. And when they are um, 
also it makes it easier for macrophages to find them if they're all stuck together. Okay, and then they just easier to kill them. All right, it's the end of part three.